suddenly, extraterrestrial beings descended upon Earth, and human military forces quickly surrounded them. Following closely, numerous scientists arrived at the scene, tasked with deciphering the intentions of these extraterrestrials. As everyone drew closer, they finally caught sight of the true form of the alien spacecraft a radiant spherical orb. The spectacle left everyone thoroughly astonished. Amidst the confusion, reinforcements arrived just in time. Armed with a plethora of weaponry, humanity had prepared for the worst ready to strike if the situation turned sour. However, the extraterrestrial craft showed no signs of aggression upon landing. As more and more people gathered around, the luminous emanations from the enigmatic sphere began to shift, culminating in a sudden burst of bright white light. Helen, a biologist, stared intently as a mysterious figure slowly emerged from within the radiance. Seeing this, she couldn't resist the urge and approached. This would mark the first contact between humanity and extraterrestrial life. Just when Helen was incredibly nervous, the alien creature took the initiative to extend its palm at this time. But before the handshake could take place, a gunshot pierced the air. The guards had misconstrued the extraterrestrial's intentions as hostile. As the extraterrestrial fell from the gunshot, the mysterious sphere started to activate. Amidst the astonished gazes of onlookers, a colossal being strode forth from the luminous sphere. The giant wasted no time in launching an attack. With red beams emitting from its eyes, the giant incapacitated all electronic devices in its vicinity. Yet, its assault had only just begun. It emitted a peculiar sonic wave that caused all humans who heard it to collapse. At that moment, the giant stood like a deity, rendering humanity powerless in its presence. Swiftly, it approached the injured extraterrestrial, Helen, in a state of shock. Looked on, soon the giant came to the injured alien. Helen looked up in horror, just as the giant was about to extend its hand towards her. The wounded extraterrestrial emitted a sound. Upon hearing the command, the giant ceased its actions and became immobile, as the red glow in the giant's eyes subsided. The surrounding electronic devices gradually returned to normal function, the incapacitated humans regained their mobility. Subsequently, scientists rushed the extraterrestrial to a hospital. However, when doctors incised the alien's skin, its muscular tissue began to rapidly disintegrate. The doctors swiftly removed the projectile and proceeded to clean the deteriorating muscles. Once the cleanup was complete, the ensuing sight left everyone utterly astounded because the extraterrestrial being looked identical to a human. So, the scientists promptly commenced genetic analysis of the extraterrestrial. They discovered that the alien harbored three distinct life forms within. Apart from an extraordinary brain, the rest of its bodily tissues were entirely human. The gray tissue that once enveloped it, however, contained a different set of genes. When Helen learned of this, she immediately analyzed it. The muscle tissue wrapped around the alien should be similar to a placenta, which is used to provide life support for the alien. The extraterrestrial's original appearance must have been different, but in order to survive on Earth, they would have to be born on Earth in a human body. It seemed this wasn't the extraterrestrial's first visit to Earth. They had likely come before, extracting human genes. The current extraterrestrial was rapidly growing, transforming into an adult in just half a day. Upon receiving this information, Defense Minister Regina decided to initiate contact with the extraterrestrial. Remarkably, the extraterrestrial, named Klaatu, was already fluent in human languages from birth. He explained that he came seeking the United Nations and intended to elucidate his purpose to humanity as a whole. However, Regina remained unsatisfied with this response, as the luminous sphere was situated in the United States. Despite opposition from the scientists, she opted for a forced interrogation of Klaatu, seeing that Regina had made up her mind. So when Helen was injecting Klaatu, she not only changed the drug used for interrogation in advance, but also took the opportunity to quietly remind Klaatu. However, Klaatu had no intention of escaping and allowed the agent to take him to the interrogation room. Once the instruments were connected, the interrogation experts activated a lie detector. Any falsehood spoken by Klaatu would trigger irregular brainwave patterns, but this method proved futile against him. Concentrating his focus, Klaatu effortlessly manipulated his brainwaves, rendering the lie detector useless. The interrogation experts to switch off the device, but his body was suddenly electrocuted. Then he sat up again as if nothing had happened. It turned out that Klaatu had already used his brainwaves to control the interrogation experts in just a short time. Then Klaatu began to ask how to leave this place. Upon obtaining the desired information, Klaatu unleashed his terrifying extraterrestrial power. His consciousness could freely traverse through circuits, enabling him to map the base's layout with ease. 
through surveillance cameras, he pinpointed the locations of all guards. Once all preparations were complete, Klaatu emitted a unique sonic wave through the guards' earpieces. Instantaneously, all guards collapsed. By this time, Klaatu had donned the attire of the interrogation expert. He boldly strolled out of the base. However, when Klaatu emerged outside, his wounds reopened during the battle. Using an ordinary human guise, Klaatu sought help from the police and swiftly connected with Helen. The reason Klaatu was looking for Helen was because she had a sample of the alien's placenta. It can be used to treat any injury. Moreover, Helen seemed to be the only human Klaatu could trust. Given her earlier warning, Regina, having lost track of Klaatu, redirected her focus to the mysterious luminous sphere that had landed. Soon, two bomber aircraft sped toward the target extraterrestrial technology at its peak. Humanity was now launching an assault against it. However, before the missiles could even reach their destination, the giant's eyes emanated a torrent of red light. Instantly, all missiles were obliterated, and even the aircrafts lost control under the influence of the red beams. I'm out of control! Though the attack didn't harm the extraterrestrial, the military discovered a trait of the giant, as long as it was not attacked, it would remain dormant, capitalizing on this, the military secured the giant in a shipping container, surprisingly, the government's intention was to utilize the giant to gain insight into extraterrestrial civilization, on the other end, Klaatu swiftly contacted another extraterrestrial, who had assumed a human identity and lived on Earth for 70 years. His mission was to discreetly observe humanity. Through Mr. Wu's prolonged contact and observations, he concluded that humans possessed limitless destructive tendencies, and his assessment would determine humanity's fate. Ultimately, Klaatu's conclusion was to initiate a destruction program. He instructed Mr. Wu to be prepared to leave. However, Mr. Wu chose to remain on Earth. If you stay, you'll die. I love them. This is a very strange thing. After parting ways with Mr. Wu, Klaatu had Helen take him to a desolate wilderness. As Klaatu stepped out of the car, curious Helen discreetly followed him into the forest. Helen had just entered the forest when a swarm of wild bees flew towards her. Strangely, the wild bees didn't attack her. Following the trail of the wild bees, Helen soon found Klaatu by the lake. Hidden here was another luminous sphere. As the sphere gently surfaced, a myriad of creatures flocked to it. As the surrounding creatures entered the sphere, Klaatu approached it, extending his hand toward the sphere. The massive sphere thousands of miles away also began to change. These spheres could interact with each other, and there were many of them on Earth. As Klaatu gives the command, these balls of light begin to attract surrounding creatures into them, whether in the barren desert or in the vibrant rainforest. Even in the sea, light balls were appearing. The appearance of these spheres quickly caught humanity's attention, but they proved indestructible. People could only observe the various beings slumbering within. Soon, the spheres underwent a new transformation. In an instant, whether it was the Great Wall of China or the Pyramids of Egypt, countless spheres ascended into the sky and departed Earth. Eventually, only the sphere that had accompanied Klaatu remained. No one knew the purpose behind the extraterrestrial's actions. On the other side, Klaatu was ready to say goodbye to Helen after completing his mission. At this moment, unable to contain her curiosity, Helen voiced her questions. I need to know what's happening. If you die, the Earth's... Under strong. Helen's persistent inquiry, Klaatu finally revealed his purpose for coming to Earth. It turned out that humanity's current actions were leading the planet to destruction. There are very few planets in the universe that can harbor life. And they've given mankind 70 years, but they haven't changed a thing in that time. The program to annihilate humanity had been initiated. They had preemptively taken samples of various earthly life forms, and after their operation concluded, they would restore the planet. However, the human population would be gone, and Earth's ecosystem would start anew without humanity. Upon learning the truth, Helen was devastated. She pleaded with Klaatu for another chance for humanity. I tried to speak with your leader. If you want to speak to one of our leaders, I'll take you to one. Yet, as Helen and Klaatu prepared to leave, the military tracked them down. They had no choice but to escape into the forest. But, helicopters continued to hover above them. It was Helen's child Jacob who called the police, thinking that his mom shouldn't help the aliens. Just as Helen was about to explain to Jacob, a special agent apprehended her and took her away on a helicopter. By the time Klaatu arrived, 
Responding to the commotion, Helen had already been whisked away, and the two remaining fighters, when they saw Klaatu, the first thing they did was to activate their weapons. Before they could fire, Klaatu used the infrared light aimed at him through the fighters to directly cause both planes to lose control instantly. Meanwhile, observing the extraterrestrials actions regina recalled the story of noah's arkansas if the extraterrestrials had used the spheres to transport other earthly life forms then humanity was inevitably facing a catastrophic world-ending disaster as a result the military expedited their study of extraterrestrial civilization they transported the giant to a military base what kind of terrifying existence is it that even a steel door weighing several tons couldn't trap it Armored tanks surrounded the base, and the general prepared for combat. Suddenly, with a resounding boom, the half-meter-thick steel door was instantly blasted away, followed by countless unknown creatures swarming out from inside. The general ordered an attack. Soldiers unleashed a barrage of firepower, ammunition raining down upon the target. Astonishingly, the assault proved futile. The ammunition was devoured the instant it struck the black mist. With each attack, the mist's dimensions grew, swarming toward the military forces. Shortly thereafter, on a highway not far from the base, a truck driver noticed cracks appearing on his windshield. Suddenly, before he could react, the unknown creatures were upon his vehicle. In a matter of moments, the truck was engulfed, and the black mist continued to expand. It spread wildly across the world, targeting all of humanity's creations along its path. Wherever the black mist passed, everything was reduced to its sustenance. With the swift movement of the unknown entities, they soon reached the outskirts of cities. The sudden appearance of the black mist was a consequence of humanity's audacious attempt to decipher extraterrestrial civilization. The giant was using an unknown genomechanical technology, and all human detection methods were useless against it. Not even the hardest diamond tip drills could make a dent, but mankind doesn't have the time to study it slowly. In response, Senator instructed a staff member to enter an isolation chamber and replace a fractured alloy drill bit, but little did anyone know, countless nanomites had appeared on the surface of the newly replaced drill, and as they continue to eat the nanomites, their numbers are rapidly multiplying. When the technician completed the drill replacement, he noticed the previous bit disintegrating swiftly. This is the hardest metal on earth. The scared staff immediately tried to leave the isolation room, but then the general realized that the staff's clothes were being eaten away. The senator immediately ordered the gate not to be opened. As everyone watched, the staff member began to bleed profusely and finally collapsed on the floor. Nonetheless, the crisis was only beginning. A new development unfolded within the isolation chamber. The metallic frame that had held the giant was swiftly melting. The bulletproof glass in front of the senator began to crack, realizing that the situation was spiraling out of control. The senator activated the incineration protocol. High temperature flames exceeding a thousand degrees engulfed the chamber. Yet, after the flames subsided, the giant remained unscathed. Then, in the eyes of everyone shocked, the alien giant for the first time took the initiative to start the action. As the giant slowly raised its hands, its body immediately began to disintegrate, and countless nanomites instantly filled the entire space. At this point, the senator who saw what was happening tried to run away, but in the next second, Seeing that the situation had deteriorated, Regina had no choice but to find the Helen. After being subjected to a dimensional attack from the nanobots, Regina acknowledged that human technology couldn't contend with the extraterrestrial force. Helen was the only one who could persuade Klaatu to change his mind. Helen immediately called her son and swiftly returned to Jacob's side using the provided address. Upon reuniting, Helen embraced her son tightly. Klaatu, who was not far away, saw all this. In fact, through the contact with Helen during this period of time, Klaatu also saw the other side of human kindness. He finally understood why his fellow beings chose to stay on Earth despite knowing it would lead to their demise. Klaatu resolved to give humanity another chance, but now that the nanomites have already flown all over the world, he doesn't know if he can stop this plan. He urgently directed Helen to take him to Central Park, where the final extraterrestrial sphere was located. Yet, at that moment, Regina received a call from the president, demanding immediate destruction of the extraterrestrial sphere. Just as Helen and company reached the park, a tremendous explosion resounded. The car they were in was flung by the blast. However, once the smoke cleared, the extraterrestrial sphere remained undamaged. A nanostorm was rapidly approaching the city. As they crawled out of the car, the sky was already engulfed by the black mist. Now, 
Even Claude dared not approach the sphere, he urgently guided Helen and Jacob to take cover under a bridge. However, in the short contact just now, Helen and the boy had already been invaded by the nanomites. Claude made a crazy decision, he transferred all the nanomites to himself. As Claude is now a human, this means that he will lose his life soon, yet at this point Claude didn't hesitate for a moment, for he saw a change in mankind at a time of life and death. As Helen watched, Claude turned around and walked into the black mist, facing the overwhelming number of nanomites. Even Claude was not immune to them, but with Claude's all-out effort, he finally managed to get close to the ball of light, with Claude's leap. His palm finally touched the ball of light again. As a white light spread out from the ball of light, the nanomites in the sky immediately turned into dust. At that moment, all the nanomites had already lost their lives. When everything was calm again, Helen brought the boy to the ball of light. The ball of light had already been reactivated, and this time it was going to leave this place, perhaps. In many years, it might return to Earth once more. Uncertain if humanity will have changed by then, 